So as you can see behind me, I have a laser engraver, specifically the Sculptfun IQ 5 watt laser engraver that they produced in the last year or so. I've had it for a few months now and oh my God, is this thing amazing. Today, we're gonna go over some of the really cool and fun features that you can do with laser engraver. My name is Zach, you're watching Prince of Geeks, stick around. Now, I've been using Lightburn for the last month. I even got an extension on the license because I didn't have the money to buy the license yet. But believe me, I'll be buying that. And that's what we're going to be using today for the laser engraving video. Uh, I'm not sponsored by Lightburn. I'm not sponsored by Dollarama either. I just, I, I like Dollarama because it's close by and it's cheap. And if I get better wood, I can do better results. And Lightburn is just one of the best software that you can buy for laser engraving if you actually choose to buy it. Because there are other options, but this is what I'm choosing to go with. Now, this is the laser engraver itself, and frankly, it's amazing. One, the size, it's its tiny, but you get a good amount of use. Like, you have this whole area right here for the engraving, and the really cool thing is you don't get the whole area, but you still get about five, five and a half inches on the engraver, which for an engraver this size, where, like, my hand, for comparison, takes about a quarter of this, um, it's really, really well worth it and really, really fun to use. So here comes the very fun game of pressing the frame button that we have right here and then aligning up the wood. This can take some time, but frankly, it isn't that bad to do. It's just a little, a little tease and a little annoying. So take a look at this. If we go ahead and frame, you'll see that wood, that goes like that and we can kind of align our wood in the center. It takes a couple of tries, but frankly, you get it working the first time the right way and it looks really good in the end. So I think we have a pretty good alignment there. I'm gonna go ahead and take this guy and rotate him. I'll go ahead and just rotate this dude, which if you hold shift, it'll actually rotate in uh, increments of rotation. So it actually makes it better. And then if you frame again, you'll see we're still in the right spot that we gotta be. So now, very important thing that you always wanna have with your engraver, you wanna put the shield on. Because frankly, this big boy here saves your eyes, saves yourself a lot of pain, a lot of hurt in your eyes later on. So it's very important to get the shield on, which is very easy to do. You just slide it over. But first, what we have to do is we have to actually make sure that the engraver is the right height. This, this laser head actually can move around. So we can go ahead and flop that down. As you can see, if I zoom in here, you'll see that the wood is, that this thing is not aligned with the height. So we're going to go ahead and take our hand and just... Plop that down until it's touching the wood, as you can see right there. Now, as you can see, we have the light shield on, or the laser shield on, I should say. We're going to go ahead and frame one more time, just to make sure it's properly aligned. And as you can see, it's properly aligned, it's perfectly centered, so we're going to go ahead and start this thing. And you guys will get a really cool time lapse of this thing filling out the way that it's going to look really awesome. Now, what isn't pictured here is the fact that we have to use what's called offset fill when you have the uh, the image traced, because that's what gives it this fill in animation, where it's almost like drawing like you would for a trace, but it's adding in the fill as time goes on. So as you can see, it makes this really cool transition. I just couldn't get it captured because my capture software couldn't actually find the window of the whole thing being uh, like previewed and explored and tested. Now, this is not be the end result. It wasn't a perfect engraving, but that might be more to do with the wood quality or, wood, or issues in the wood quality than anything else. There's a lot of moisture in the house because it is summer, but um, you get to watch a really cool drawing take place. I really enjoyed making this thing. Hope you guys did too. In the next video, I'm going to go over 3D engravings, so be sure to stick around for that. You've been watching Prince of Geeks. See you around.